Here's some examples of some rated, related rates problems that are a little bit more applied. So um, here we have a problem that's talking about cone, and we know that the volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared h. So we have basically a cone here, h is this height, and then we have the radius r, and this is how you calculate the volume. So we can tell if you were to change the radius or change the height, then the volume would adjust ac accordingly, and so you can find the relationship between the rates of change of those things. So the first problem asks us, okay, well, what's dv dt if we assume that r isn't changing, so only h is changing? So we could take the derivative of both sides. We take the derivative of this, we get dv dt, and <clears throat> since r is a constant, 1 third pi r squared, those are all constants, and then we just get dh dt. Um, or we could assume that h is a constant, so then dv dt, if we take the derivative of this with respect to t, it would be um, 1 third pi h, because h is a constant, times the derivative of r squared, which would be 2r dr dt by the generalized power rule. So we have, let's see, we have dv dt is, um, let's see, 2 thirds pi h r dr dt in that case. Well, what if both? were allowed to vary, so neither is constant. Then we could take the derivative of both sides here. So on the left, we get dv dt. On the right, since we were taking here the derivative with respect to t of this 1 third pi r squared h, we have a product of two things, right? These are constants, so they can pull through. We have 1 third pi times the derivative with respect to t of this product. R is a function of t, so r squared depends on t, and h is also a function of t. So to take the derivative of product, you take the derivative of the first, which would be 2r dr dt, times the second, plus the first, which is r squared, times the derivative of the second, which would be dh dt. Notice that if I um, distribute here and collect like terms, I have uh, 2 thirds pi r dr d, uh, let's see, pi r h dr dt, and the second term is going to be 1 third pi r squared dh dt, 1 third pi r squared dh dt. Okay, notice that if either one of these is zero, let's say that r, dr d, r was constant, so dr dt was zero, then that would wipe it out and just give us what we originally got when assuming that r was constant, or if dh dt was 0 because h was constant, then we would end up with 2 thirds pi r h dr dt, which is what we got before when we assumed that h was constant. So we could have maybe started here, figured out the full derivative, and then assuming that h was constant, we could replace dh dt with 0 and, um, or replace dr dt with 0 if r was constant. Let's do another one. Uh, this is the relationship between the the power required for an electric circuit and the resistance and the current in that particular um, circuit. So suppose that nothing's constant. So we take the derivative of both sides of this relationship um, with respect to t. Then on the left hand side we get dp dt and on the right hand side we have a product so we get dr dt times i squared and uh, plus the first times the derivative of the second. Let's see, to take the derivative of i squared, the 2 would come down. You get i to 1 power less, then you have to multiply by the derivative of what's inside. So multiply by di dt. Okay, so if the current wasn't changing, we could set that equal to 0. We have a relationship between the rate at which the resistance is changing and the rate at which the power is changing. Or if uh, the resistance was not changing, this would be zero, and we could get a relationship between the rate of change of power to the rate of change of current. Um, or we could have both I and R changing, and then we could have a relationship between those and how um, the power is changing. Here they ask us uh, to figure out how is the rate of change of the resistance related to the rate of change of the current if the power stays constant. So you're always putting the same amount of power in. How, how will... Um, the resistance and the current be how would the rates of change be related? So, what we can assume then is that since p is constant, dp dt is zero, and so from our equation above, we have zero equals dr dt 
i squared plus 2ri di dt. They ask us uh, how is dr dt related to di dt, so let's solve for dr dt. I'm going to bring this over, dr dt times i squared. It's going to be equal to, I'm going to take that one over to the other side, so it's on the other side from this, and that's going to be negative 2ri di dt. Now I can divide both sides by i squared. So when I do that, I get dr dt alone, the rate of change of the resistance with time. See here, um, this i wipes out one of those i's, so we have equals minus 2 r by i di dt. Okay, so to keep the power constant then, if you start increasing the current, then you're going to have to decrease um, the resistance. Or if you decrease uh, the current, then this would be negative, right? And so a negative times a negative would be positive. You'll have to increase the resistance to keep the power consumption constant. Okay. So um, in both of these examples, they've actually given us the relationship. It gets a little bit trickier if you have to find the relationship for yourself. So. Um, the book gives some hints for how to do that. Uh, so they have this strategy, you can look it up. And I highlighted some things that I think are probably the most important. You need to draw a picture, and then you, you're looking for an equation that is always going to be true, that relates the variables. Sometimes you'll have some information in the problem that relates to what's happening right at a particular instant. Well, that's only true at a particular instant. We'll see some examples, but look for an equation that always has to be true. Really, once you've got the equation, you're home free. You can differentiate with respect to t and then plug in inf any information in the problem that you need in order to answer the question. So let's look at a, at a couple examples. We'll start off simple, and we'll get them more complicated as we go along. First, we have a cube. Okay? It says a cube's surface area increases at a rate of a particular, at a particular rate, Okay, 72 inches squared per second. At what rate is the cube's volume changing? when the edge length is 3 inches. Ah, so we have, we have something about a cube surface area and something about its volume. And we want to figure out the relationship between the surface area and the volume. So I'm going to follow the book's advice and draw a little picture and look at a cube. Now, a cube, that means a rectangular box, right, where the edges all have the same length. So the volume of the cube is going to be length times width times height is going to be x cubed. Okay, the surface area. This uh, cube has six surfaces. There are four around the sides and a top and a bottom. So there are six surfaces. Each surface is the same, has the same dimensions. They're all x squared. So the surface area will be 6x squared. Okay, so we want to know, we know the rate at which um, the surface area is changing. And we want to know the rate at which the volume is changing. And these two relationships, actually, I could differentiate them both with respect to t. We've got dv dt would be 3x squared dx dt. OK, and we know that ds dt would be equal to, um, see, ds dt would be 12x dx dt. Okay. Now, what we're looking for, the rate at which the volume is changing. So we're looking for dv dt. We know x, but we don't know dx dt. However, we do know this relationship, and we know ds dt is 72. We know that x is 3, and that would all get multiplied by dx dt. So actually, knowing ds dt, then from this relationship, we can see that dx dt is going to be 72 divided by 12 times 3. Of course, 12 times 3 is 36, and 36 goes into 72 twice, so we actually know dx dt is 2. That's enough now to let us figure out the rate of change of the volume. So we have 3x, we're told, is 3 inches. And um, then dx dt, we know, is 2. So we have 3 times 3 times 3, that's 27, times 2 is 54. Now, to figure out the units here, we ought to look at um, 
the units that we have assembled here to calculate dv dt. First off, we know that these measures in x's, those are in inches. So if you take something in inches times something in inches, you have units of inches squared. And um, we also could figure out dx dt. dx dt should be inches per second. So remember how we got that. 72, this was um, inches cubed per second. That's 72 was, right? And this x was in inches. So if we had inches cubed per second and we divided, or sorry, surface area is inches squared per second. If we had inches squared per second and we divided by inches, then we would have something in inches per second. So yeah, the number we got for dx dt was in inches per second. So, so we, had, uh, we had this number 3. And this was a measurement in inches times itself. So that was in inches squared. And then we multiply that by inches per second. And we find that the units are inches cubed per second. That's pretty comforting because we expect that if you have a volume, you're looking at how volume changes per time. Volume should be measured in terms of length cubed. And we have our time measured in seconds. So that looks like a good answer there.